This look is fairly easy to create. It took me about 30 minutes to prepare and one to one and a half hours to apply. We spent a little bit of money on the teeth for this look. Check out our Beauty is the Beast tutorial for a different way of making fangs using Elymorph. Jumping straight into preparations. For this look, we need a prosthetic as I want that classic angry vampire forehead. To do this, I create a mix of liquid latex and regular wheat flour. Stir it all together, adding a small amount of flour at a time until you reach a consistency that looks a bit like this. Most important is that it's dense enough to hold its shape while you sculpt. I like adding the paste roughly where I want the thicker parts of my prosthetic to be and then I blend the edges. I try to make sure that I have as thin edges as I can. This will make it a lot easier to blend it into your skin later when you apply your prosthetic. Right now my main focus is the surface of my prosthetic and the edges. I want to try to get this right first. It's a lot easier to shape this in the beginning. Once your prosthetic starts to dry on you, it'll be a lot harder to fix it. So do that first and then you can do the shape of your prosthetic once you have the nice little edges that you want. This little part is a bit tricky. You want to get in there without really having long claws. Like I do, that makes it a lot harder, but try to get in there so you get a thin edge and so that you can blend it into your um, lower part of your brow and not into your eye. So you don't want it to go too far down. Using both fingers and brushes to shape the angry face muscles. I always have the latex on my fingers or on my tools. If you don't, they will stick to the paste and you won't be able to smooth anything out. So make sure you have liquid latex on your tools or fingers while you sculpt. Just as a reminder, you won't get this latex out of your brushes, so don't use any of your favorite brushes because you're going to have to throw them out. Same goes for your clothes. Make sure you don't get any liquid latex on your clothes. You're not going to be able to get it out. So use an apron or something to just cover yourself up if you are a messy person like me. I've spilled so much latex on so many nice pants, I can't even count. We are closing in on a end result for this prosthetic. So once you're happy with your sculpting, you leave it to dry overnight or you can put it in the microwave and it will be dry in about 10 seconds. It's up to you. I am happy with my sculpt. So this is what I've ended up with. Now I'm gonna let it cure. And this is what the prosthetic looks like once it's done and ready to go. Yellow contact lenses are in and I did my beauty makeup beforehand, so we'll start by covering my brows. I want them gone, so I'm using a regular glue stick. I cover the brows in glue and then I brush them upwards and repeat. Depending on the thickness of your brows, you're gonna have to do this in multiple layers. I use quite the orange thick covering stick to cover them up. This will mask the dark shade of my brows and I will correct this orange shade later with some more foundation. I set the brows by pushing some loose powder into the brows with a sponge. This will make this thick covering stick um, not go back to being greasy at all. And once everything is matte and you look happy, it is time to apply the prosthetic. I attach it using Prosade. You can use liquid latex or any other skin adhesive. I think this just works very well as I know I'm gonna get this out of my hairline in case any hairs get caught. It's a bit harder and trickier if you use latex. Now make sure it's in the right place and push it down. Here we have a little vampire flying in. I didn't know this was gonna be animated into the video, but it is. So let's make this a Swedish lesson. Vampire in Swedish is vampyr. Now make sure you get all of the edges down. 
I use a little bit more Prosade just to get the edges down and also to blend them a little bit. So I dry this all up. And then I'm going to repeat a few layers of some more Prosade. You can do the same if you use latex. Just add some more on and it'll create a bit more texture and hide your edges even better. Now Prosade is kind of sticky, so I'm using powder to cover it all up. If you're using latex, you can use more powder on top too, but Prosade is especially sticky. Cover it all in foundation. I am using the same stick that I had before in kind of orange, um, but I will mix it in with a lighter foundation too to make it work. And mix it all together. When you have a latex prosthetic, it kind of sucks up the foundation differently than your skin. So sometimes the shade is different. So you gotta work on that. I ended up being a bit more bronze than I thought. So I put some foundation on my neck too for it to blend better with my skin. This talent shout out goes to Lady Paradox. She has such an inspiring feed with awesome makeup looks. Check out her art, show her some love and tell her that we said hi. Using a brown eyeshadow to fill out the lines on the forehead. This really brings out the angry features of my prosthetic. I am using a very thin brush to make sure I get all the way down and that I don't get any brown eyeshadow where I don't want it to be. Apart from making the shapes of the face look a lot cooler, all of these lines also takes away some attention from um, edges that you don't like. I have some that I didn't blend as well as I hoped. So putting a lot of focus into things happening in the middle of the face takes away all the focus from the things you don't want them to see. I am going in with a brown cream color to blend the lines that I made with some eyeshadow. I think this is starting to look really cool. Using a close to white cream color, I give the brow bone a little bit more highlight, followed by some actual shimmer highlight, because I am a very fabulous little vampire. I really like the end result of this look, so I'm actually thinking about being a vampire for Halloween. Please do tell me if you have any ideas on what you're going to be for Halloween, because I need some inspiration. I'm going to quite a lot of Halloween parties this year. Now there are some lines and bumps that I want to take away more attention from so I'm adding speckles like I almost always do using a brown hairspray. This gives some cute freckles to my face that I like and an overall texture to my skin. No vampire without vampire fangs. I had these in the studio. If you don't have any, you can make your own using Elemore plastic like I did in the Beauty is the Beast tutorial. I really hope you like this tutorial because I am so happy with it. I want you to tell us what you want to see next and don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>